Hey folks, welcome back over to So Blue Productions as we bring you coverage for the 6th annual Weapons of Grass Destruction brought to you by Dammit Dis over in Tupelo. We're playing the Trace Gold layout, otherwise known as Warrior's Run. I am Dustin Murray leading the commentary today, and with me, I have one of our players in the card. It's Josh Coghill. How you doing there, man? Doing, man. I'm doing good. How you doing? Doing pretty good, man, as, uh, of course, you know, one of the locals here. So great to have you. Of course, we have Cameron Colglazer, always a favorite in the Southeast to do very well. Uh, always kind of that one-two finish with Matt Orham in the Alabama scene and even placed 15th at World. So definitely a good player. A couple other great guys we'll talk about along the way as well. But why don't you tell me a little about this first hole that we're playing? Yeah, man, hole one, it's, uh, it's a, a must-get really on this kind of course. Um, these holes are very difficult, but it's just a low ceiling shot. A lot of players, though, low forehands or, or rollers. Yeah, definitely the low ceiling is going to be something that's going to get tested. It looks like this forehand is coming in a little high, so it seems like it got beat down a little bit early. This one also yeah, leaks over see. early. Yeah, the, this catch cam footage doesn't really show you the height. On this one, you'll get to see exactly how low you need to keep the disc. Looks like you got a pretty good throw there. Yeah, not too bad. Good, good first shot of the tournament. Indeed, and this is JT. He is, or GT, I think it is, actually. Coming over from Texas. It's about 10-12 rated, so a pretty strong player from the Texas side of things. Like he was able to approach up there for the par just fine. Cam looking to do the same thing. So for a hole that's kind of a musket, it seems like our card, a little bit of a struggle today on this one. Yeah, starting out the tournament, um, you know, got a lot of nerves going. So it's one of the easier holes on the tournament, but it gets kind of hard when you, when you throw in the nerves, so... Very true. It's like everyone's kind of cleaning up here. See you up. I can see it. Uh, things going. Uh oh. Yep. There's there's some nerves for you. I was I was shaking on that putt. I'm not even gonna lie. <laughs> Is this your first time on coverage or? Uh no. So I've been covered a few other times by some different um, production teams, but this is the first one on So Blue. Hear you. Well, good to have you, and also great to have you on the commentaries. We're kind of watching a couple of the folks here. Getting the pars cleaned up, like no one here on the lead card, feature card, I guess in this case, was able to get the birdie this time around. But no harm, no foul. Still a lot of golf left to play as we see the pars getting cleaned up. So indeed, all is even. Head on over to our second hole here. And as we get over to it, why don't you tell me what we're looking at here? Yeah, uh, this one's another. It's a it's a pretty simple shot um, compared to some of the rest of the course. It's just a, a wide open hyzer. Uh, once you get closer to the basket, um, the closer you get, the narrow, the more narrow the the fairway gets. Um, so a lot of players are going to try to play the low skip off of the road um, and kind of just hit the brakes by the baskets. Assuming the roads are OB, right? Yeah, anything on or across the road, both on the right and left side, are both going to be OB. Got GT up first, and oh, he slips. That is really unfortunate. You have to imagine that took a little bit off of that throw. Yeah, we had, we had, right leading up to this tournament, a couple of days, we had some rough weather. Um, left these deep pads kind of slick. That's really unfortunate. At least he's able to stay online. And so, you know, at worst, he's going to want with the par. We see Sam here coming up a little bit short as well on his drive. But still online. And I yeah, know Cam's got this power. Oh yeah, yeah. This one—it's a little bit downhill, um, but you need to have at least 420, you know, feet to be able to attack this hole. Seems like Cam has done just that—a little bit deep with the basket. Oh, and slow down. Yep. Yeah, almost skipped, but that tree kind of stopped them from getting into that OB. So good job there. Is again, he, hes one of those guys that makes distance look effortless. You're up next yep. here. He's Cam is very, very smooth. Um, he's one of the top players. To me, he's one of the top guys in the in the country. Um. So he's, he's, he's going to be fun to watch this round. Like I said, a 15th at Worlds earlier this year, so definitely can't contend when he's out there. And you threw a pretty good drive, too, so don't sell yourself short. That one looked like it was kind of approaching edge of circle one. Yeah, I'll have a I'll have a, a look for Brady. Um, GT, GT also has a, a nice bit of power. He could have got there, but unfortunately, you know, he took the fall on the tee pad, so. Yeah, one of those ones you feel rough about is, yeah, you definitely have a look here, open at least, but definitely... Not a gimme. Yep. Still still a little shaken up, man. It's going to take, uh, it only takes me a couple holes to get loose, um, but it happens. 
Cam trying to get the solo birdie on the card, and he'll be able to do just that again. That tree stopping him from dealing with any type of OB and pretty routine putt for him. I know he's been changing up his putt a little bit uh, after the City of Mobile Championships, trying to fine tune it and uh, able to get it there as we see everyone else seemingly looking to clean up all their pars. Yeah, the rest of these shots should be pretty routine. Um, just you know, some basic comeback putts, and everyone should move on with pars besides Cam. Cam's just over there playing a little toss to himself. Background. Yeah. <laughs> so we see everyone able to take care of the pars, no problem, as we would expect. So I give Cam a stroke heading into hole number three. UGT has like a little bit of a routine of tapping the band after he's done putting out. Yeah, yeah, you'll see. Yeah, you'll see some players. That's just um, something that they, you know, they, they get into a routine, and that's just something that makes them feel um, better and settles them in a little bit. So we'll see how he does here. Yeah, first par four, by the way, on hole three here. So why don't you uh, kind of break down how this one gets played? Yeah, so this is a, a pretty simple two-shot hole. Um, the first shot's a big anhyzer over the trees, um, and you want to land short of the path. If you land in that path, um, you end up OB, so. Here we go. Cam looking to line out that sky, Annie, just as you were talking about. It's like, oh, it's just barely avoiding that tree line, but is it going to avoid the road? That's the big question. It takes a skip off of it, and I don't know. We're going to have to take a look at that later, I think. GT's up now. Yeah, GT lets it go a little bit low. Um, unfortunately, that's going to catch it. Oh, but he gets a good break. It gets all the way through it. Yeah, so he's still going to have a chance to approach. We're going to see a forehand here out of Sam. Yeah, Sam's a uh, predominantly forehand. Um, he's got a lot of power with that forehand. So any kind of like long distance shots, you'll see him break out the forehand. Yeah, not too shabby. He kind of tested that tree line, but able to get through. And now you're up next. What, what are you looking at here? Um, I want to do the same thing as Cam, just hang it out a little bit more wide. Um, unfortunately, that one was just a bit too wide. Like you got knocked over here, and this is a really tough scramble for you, it looks like. Yeah, I was put in a rough spot here. Luckily, I had a little bit of a window to, to throw a forehand and put myself back into you know, decent range to save the par. Yeah, that was honestly about the best you could have done, I feel like, man. So that was... Uh... Pretty good way to get yourself out of trouble. We see Sam trying to see if he can approach up to the basket. Again, with this being a par four, definitely still a chance to get up there and maybe get himself a birdie putt. And man, that's a beauty. Yeah, that's a fantastic shot. Right by this basket, you got a, a lot of hard ground. Um, so the, the ground play with the disc here is important. He, of course, made it a little bit further up the fairway. So he's just looking for a routine approach in his own right off the backhand. And like it's skipping down there nicely. Very much in circle one. Yeah, that'll be a look for Brady. Here's you, just trying to chip up and save the par, and it, like you've done just that. Yeah, after missing the first two, um, and then missing this one, uh, Ooh. I just wanted to put this one kind of close. Yeah, Cam ended up very, very close. He got the call. He was in bounds, mm -hmm. uh, but it was a lot closer than we thought it was. It seemed like it was like one or two inches over the edge of the road there. Uh, so he is able to get his meter off and get the approach. And so it looks like he's going to be able to wind up with a birdie when it's all said and done. Yeah, Cam starting two through three. That's a great start on this course. You want to get your birdies as early as you can because the course gets tough in the middle. Yeah, I definitely see like there's some tougher holes coming up from what I've seen. It looks like you're able to collect a par putt there, no problem. And it's like the rest of the card is looking to get birdies here. Already see GT yeah, getting his and now Cam getting his as well. Yep, everyone's going to have drop-in birdies pretty much, and, and I'm falling back of the pace, but it's what you can expect when you're on the feature card of a of an A-tier like this. So, Still a lot of golf to play, but we'll take a short break before we get into more of it. You looking for quality? What if we told you our steaks start with wood? It's cut, it's dried, and then used to fire our one-of-a-kind grills. Our Prime Cut Certified Angus Beef Steaks would taste just like any other Prime Cut steak if we didn't do it our way. Seasoned and cooked to perfection. Now that's quality. Cut and dried. Harvey's. A difference you can taste. Oh, here we go. We're in hole four. Another par four. 500 feet. This looks tight, though, Josh. 
Yeah, this one's uh, this is a this is the first I would say demanding tee shot of the round. Um, you have to throw a very very tight shot, um, and you can't really deviate too far left or right. So where the drone is flying about right here is where you want your first shot to land. Um, and if you're any short of that or any longer, you're gonna have a, a tough time getting the birdie. So am stepping up first here to lead the way. He had a weird kind of reaction off that tee shot where he jumped off. I'm not sure if he slipped or what happened, but his shot lines up pretty darn good, it looks like. Yeah, he's he's pretty pretty spot on in the, the landing zone. I would say maybe another 10 feet forward would be perfect, but he should have a pretty easy look at birdie there. We see GT. This one's looking like it's leaking a little bit to right, maybe a little bit overturned, and so he's going to have a little bit of work to do. Yeah, that's uh, and from there you're looking at a pitch up. Definitely seems like jail on that side of the fairways. Sam looks like he leaked his a little bit wide to the right as well. Can it fade in time is the question. It seems like the answer is a yes, but did it fade too much, Josh? Yep, yep. So he's actually going to be short, um, and you, you would rather be short than anywhere on the right-hand side. Um, for me, unfortunately, I left it a little bit low, and I'm also going to come up short. I think you're not as deep as Sam, but I can't really tell, so maybe there's still some hope there for you. We're going to see GT approach here first, and yeah, he looks like he's in a lot of trouble here. Yeah, this is from here, um, this is where this course gets you. If you try to get too aggressive like GT does, he gets a, throws it a little bit too far, and now he's he's pinned down pretty bad. Seems like Sam took his medicine just fine there, though, and pitched out into the middle of the fairway, so it seems like he should be set up prime to still save the par. Are you going to do the same thing, or are you getting aggressive? Uh, no, I'm uh, so me being sort of local and Sam being sort of local. Um, this course have got has gotten us enough to you know, <laughs> you know, just pitch it to the middle, take your par, and move on. You've taken too many licks along the way. Oh, absolutely. Oh, that's a misfire. Yeah, that's not something you see out of Cam. That's just a just a mental um, lapse in focus there. That is tough because he had pretty good tee shot and kind of soiled it, but. Playing strong nonetheless, and of a tree catch there, but still in the middle of the fairway. And now it's time for you to try to approach up for your par. Yeah, after pitching out like that, um, you really can't afford to miss shots like this. So luckily, I was I was able to throw a pretty good shot, and I'll have a tap in par there. Not gonna have a tap in right now. It's JT. He is having to do a whole lot of finagling try to get a disc out of these woods right now. It seems like. Yeah, this is a good camera view here. That angle, it, that shows you what it's like pretty much off of every fairway here. So now Cam still attempting to get a birdie here, but it's a long one. It's going to be a long putt to try to get it. Bit of a straddle hop. Right there. Oof. That was... Good bid. Seemed like it was pretty close. Maybe just a little short. Straddle putt here for GT to try to salvage things after a tough run so far on this hole. Just never got that one up. Yeah, the, there's a little bit of a ceiling close to the basket, makes it, and you're putting uphill, so it makes it hard to give it a, a good bid. Sam trying to save par. Ooh, just a little right. Yeah, just barely off. Sam's a good putter, so he'll he'll get it going. Still early in the round. And we can see everyone's kind of licking their wounds right now on the putting green, trying to just get out of this one after. Everyone at some point in time, I feel like, had a struggle on this hole, some more than others, but everyone finding their way out of it here as everyone remains even, except for Cam, who is still two down. Our fourth hole as we roll things out into our fifth. This looks like another narrow corridor to maneuver your way through. Yeah, um, this is where, so this is, you're starting to get into the middle half of the course, um, or the middle of the front nine anyways. Um, this one's a it's a demanding tee shot you have to hit a gap off the box um, and keep the disc moving left land somewhere in this area um, and then you have to miss that middle tree for the for your second shot to have a look at birdie yeah this that's one's, this was pretty tough that middle tree at the end of the tunnel seems pretty cruel not gonna lie you, you yeah, got a lot to navigate and then you still got that one right there where you want to be so we'll see what cam can do as he's up first uh yeah it's a little inside Definitely tough. You're up next. See if you can make the correction. Yeah, this tee pad, man, this tee pad was real slick. So I put a towel down um, and I just couldn't. My focus was on the towel, not the shot. So GT looking like he's got a little bit of a better time with this one. Seems like he's 
done it just right, though it a little to the right side, but it seems like he still should have a pretty chance at an approach. Yeah, he's got a, a nice forehand too, so he should have a, a pretty easy forehand shot. Like Sam followed suit there pretty nicely with his shot, though it seems like it might be... Nope, never mind. I thought maybe it might drift a bit too far to the left early, but it seems like it got through. Yeah, that's a good landing spot. Um, he should have a pretty decent look at the basket. You're back in scramble mode. Forehand roller and, uh... Well? Yeah. That's what this course does. If you get aggressive, it'll eat you up. And that one for me just went straight. Didn't do what I thought it was going to do. Cam just has a little bit of a pitch out forehand in his own right. and seems like he's able to get out into a position that he wants to be in. Yeah, that's a really good shot by Cam there. So GT is kind of the hope that we have left in trying to maybe attack the green here, though it still seems like it's going to be a tough shot to ask of someone. Yeah, he was a little bit further right than I remembered him being. Um, but considering where he was, that's a really good shot. He got past that middle tree, so. And he was able to get out. At least he's done with the doom of the forest for now <laughs> out in the uh, opening there as you're looking to try to do something similar here with your forehand. Yeah, I don't That one just, I'm pitching across fairways here at this point, so I'm ready to get off of this one. It's all zigzag disc off for you right now, but as you said, uh, hopefully brighter skies are very much on the horizons. We see Sam here pitching up a forehand. This looks pretty clean. Yeah, that was a really nice shot by Sam. Yeah, puts him right there in circle one for sure. So definitely going to have a chance to get something going as we're going to see Cam taking his third shot. Trying to see if he can't salvage the par on this one. Little uh, turn over there with the putter. A little early, but it seems like he should be fine still. Yeah, he's inside the circle. We'll have a look to save his par. What are you thinking here? Uh, so that the cedar right in front of me, the small one, had a small gap to get through and was able to get there. I'll take my medicine on this one. No harm in that. Being, of course, a three-round tournament. Have a lot of time still to play this. Looks like he was kind of giving that a run. Yeah, yeah, he was. Um, that was a really good bid from where he was. Uh, he knows that he'll have a little bit of a comebacker, but... He's a good putter, so he it shouldn't be an issue. It's one of those runs that seems safe enough. I yeah, wasn't risking yep. too much throwing it as lightly as he did, as we do see Cam cleaning up there. His putt, and the rest of the field hoping to do the same. Yeah, that's a great par save by Cam. If you most of the time you get if you get early off the box there, it's a that's hard to save a par. So good job by Cam there. And GT with a nice comeback save there as well. And tap. And Sam having to do a little bit of a straddle uh, on a knee type situation here. It's not the most comfortable putt, but able to deliver. Yeah, Sam picks up the birdie on the hole. That's a that's a very, very good birdie on this course. Absolutely. So you take one there. He's staying even, so still pretty tight through five holes. No one really jumping off the page just yet. But now we're stepping into another par four here on hole six. What we got going on? Uh, so this is the levee hole. Uh, most of the time we have some wind on this hole in particular, but um, luckily there, was, there wasn't much wind to contend with. So the shots here, so where there's OB that lines all the tall stuff, you want, you want to kind of overshoot it, throw you a forehand approach to the basket. Um, this one's pretty straightforward. One of those ones where you get out the woods, you can finally let loose, but you don't want to leak too far either direction because you definitely can still skip into the water on either side of this fairway as that is rolling, but luckily it stops from doing anything too harmful. Now we see Cam coming out here looking to rip one. Again, definitely a guy who has well over 500 feet of power. Yeah, Cam can get the disc out there. He's playing a, a pretty safe hyzer shot over the water, something overstable. Um, gets it back in bounds. He should have a pretty easy birdie there. Now we're going to see GT come up. And I know he definitely has power in his own right. This is looking like it's going. Let's see. Yeah, he knew that out of his hand. This, that disc seemed to be just a little bit too understable for this hole. He just got over on it and it never came back. See you. Looking like a pretty solid line. Getting a nice little flex out of it. And down. And, man, you blasted that thing. Yeah, I got a hold of that one. I was a little bit frustrated with the last hole, so <laughs> I got to open up a little bit. That seems like GT on a, a drop zone situation here. Yeah, this one you could you could pick your last point of inbounds or drop zone, and 
for him. He chose the drop zone, so. I think he laid that up pretty nicely. Try to get the most out of this hole that he can after the OB off the tee. Sam here now with his trusty forehand. Yeah, this approach gets kind of tricky. You you want to land short of the basket. Um, all that pine straw right right near the basket will cause you to just get a skip, and there's an OB road that's right behind it. So you'll see a lot of guys come up just short. There you go, Cam, trying to follow your advice there. Ooh, yep. that yeah. was uh, yeah. a little bit of a nail biter. Yeah, anywhere. Yeah, you hit up there by that hill. That tends to happen, and it looks like I'm going to follow Cam. Oh, yep, making minis with them there for a disc. second. Yeah. There you go. Yep. Jiggle, jiggle, but uh, no one getting pushed off into the road, so all good. Like a decent length birdie bid here for Sam. Oh, oh. so close. Just left. Definitely gave it a good bid, but just not quite. See Cam staying in bounds, so a chance to get his birdie out of this, and indeed he seems like he's going to be able to collect, and they're going to try to follow. Yeah, um, I haven't gotten a birdie yet to this point, so watching Cam make that, in my mind, I'm like, I have to make this. But also behind the basket, there's a drop-off, so um, not a far putt, but a little bit to think about on it. Well, this was a great hole from you. You had the, the CTP off the tee and able to get your birdie, so able to finally get a start going, so not too shabby as we're seeing ET here. Trying to save the bogey. Like the footing's a bit awkward for him here, obviously on the hill slope, trying to get himself settled in. Yeah, he it connects. Down. Yeah, I think, and that's actually for, I believe that's for his par, and it's a par four. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's My mistake. From the box, so, yep. That's why I have the expert with me. Save me from situation. That one. Uh, everyone getting. An improvement on this hole as we now move on to our first par five 10 55 hole seven this is uh this gives me like some ledgestone vibes yeah yeah it's very similar um you're kind of island hopping on mm -hmm. this one um similar to some of the the holes near the back of the course at ledgestone uh, this one tends to play as the hardest hole in the course uh most weekends just because there's so much out of bounds on the right um will tend to hang their discs a little bit more left because they're scared of the water. So, And then that road that runs on the left side is also a B. And we see Cam up first. Seems like he's just looking for placement off the tee here. Yeah, if he, if guys who can throw a little bit further, they play this forehand layup. Um, it doesn't really gain you too much if you go get aggressive off the box. So, Yeah, you look into basically follow suit there with your placement forehand and Get a very similar result. Seemed like that's what you're going for. Sam going for the backhand. Yeah, so Sam's actually trying to hit the second landing zone. Um, and just like that, if you that water just plays a big part in a lot of shots, so um, you'll see a lot of shots leap left on people. Josh trying to avoid the mistake from the last hole of going too far right into the water. And this one needs to get back in a hurry. Skip. No, not going to happen. Back to back water for GT. Yeah, that was a little bit unfortunate. I thought out of his hand that one looked good. It just didn't have the stability to get back in bounds. Looked like it was almost going to make it. But just a little too low or too short, however you want to spin it. But now you're up. Pretty solid. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, out of a... Uh-oh. Huh? Don't tell me. Yeah, it stays on the road. Out of my hand, I thought it was good. Um, once again, man, that water will just puts a little bit of added pressure on your shots, and you'll see that a lot. Yeah, this is a skinny fairway, right? The road's OB. You have to challenge the water to make sure you don't go OB, but then you could overturn and go on the water OB. So it's kind of pick your poison, but Cam seems to fit that disc right in where it needed to be. Yeah, that's a perfect shot by Cam. He'll have another... The exact same shot to the basket. He's trying to clean things up here. Going in the drink off of his first shot. Can this one do better? Yes. Stays in. Yeah, that's a really nice shot by GT there. Kind of knew that he had to get a bunch of distance on that. It felt like just based on how his tee shot went, he was able to accomplish that. So that's great news for him. 
Sam going for the Heiser as well. And yep, able to land in. Yep. Anywhere near this tree over here to our left is, is a good shot. Sam lets another one go, and this is also looking like it's doing what it needs to. Yeah, that's a good shot. He's going to be a little bit short, probably 45 feet or so just outside the circle. The big hole. There's definitely a lot of big numbers on this hole, and the very few. Or this whole round, at least. Yeah, I know this one got me uh, two of the three rounds. It it got me for a, for a bogey or better. So, spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> As it looks like this disc has uh, pretty much hit the mark. Yeah, a little bit wide. Um, I let my second shot leak left, so I wanted to correct and and leave it out a little bit closer to the water there. GT shot looks really nice. Yeah, that's a really good shot from GT. Yeah, I mean, I feel like he's done the best that he can after, you know, the off the tee situation to kind of keep the composure and just make sure that you play out the hole as best you can from that point forward. And he's you know, that. Yeah, long bit here from Sam and just a little short. Ooh. Yep. Uh... I don't know. I don't know what to say about that one. That was just a just an air ball. <laughs> Skied it a little bit. Cam will put in the birdie. One of three players to birdie the hole on the day. Isaac Mars and Jeremy Vaughn being the other two. Shout out to them. Getting the most out of this. And I'll tap in my, my bogey there. That's not what you want to do after you pick up your first birdie on the round. Let's follow it up with a bogey, so... Yeah, that is always a tough one. GT able to salvage the hole. Um, like I said this this hole can can add up some strokes on you quick. So um, GT able to save the five there. That's a really nice save for him going at OB off the box. Now we're on hole eight, a par three at 458 feet water. Once again, a big feature. Seems like here. Yeah, we're in this this middle stretch of the course. It's about to start getting really hard. A lot of water. Um, this is a very very difficult. Yeah, it's one of those. It's one of those holes where do you want to bail out short and get your par, or do you want to challenge that water and try to actually get up there and give yourself a birdie putt? And Cam does seem like he has gone for it. He's got the perfect skip, and he is pretty much yeah, parked. That's a, yeah, that's about as good as you can play the hole. Cheeky smile. Josh wanting to stay in bounds, I'm sure, after the last couple of holes. And this one's kind of taking a turn for the worse, but right. starting to fade now. But can it fade enough? Oh, that's three in a row off the tee that's done that to him. Yeah, he looks like he's having a little bit of difficulty off the box. That should be fine. Yeah, this one's I'm not, I'm not really trying to get too aggressive. I just want to find inbounds on this one. I don't mind taking a par here. And it seems... Oh, Sam's throwing his way out there to the right, though. He's trying to make things happen. Seems like it's going to fade in, though, in time. Indeed, he yep. does get back to land, so nicely done. Drop zone situation yeah, just, here. Yeah, still not an easy shot from the drop zone. You still have a ton of water to worry about, so... Um, looks like he's throwing a really, really good shot here. Yeah, I mean, that was... Not too far off of maybe even giving it a little bit of a run. I like drop zones like that. You know, ones that still kind of force you to take that challenge rather than kind of giving you something for free. So I think that's good course design. And what a what a putt. Yeah, after airballing the last one, um, that one felt good to get. Especially after bogeying right after a birdie. Um, starting to find my groove a little bit here. Sam has a long bit ahead of him as well at the step putt. And just a slight miss there. Seems like he's stuck at that 35 range. Nice spot from Cam there. Yeah. yeah, Cam's on fire. This is a he's he's lighting it up right here so far on this front nine. 
Yep, you and Cam, only two of four people to birdie this hole. Dylan Cooper and Osvaldo Fasto also able to get some birdies on this hole on round one. So shout out to them. Airbirds. Yeah, that's one they call it. It's a four-digit separator hole. If, you, if you've got a thousand rating or higher, that's one that you, you'd like to get. Speaking of holes you'd like to get, we're on par three, hole number nine. Just under 370 feet. What are we looking at here? Uh, so this one's it's pick your best shot and throw it really. You can throw a hyzer out to the right or you can throw the forehand out to the left. Um, if you're going to go to the right, you have to get it high to beat the trees towards the end of the hole. So you also have an OB rope down the right side. You see as Cam takes the high shot. Um, looking like it's pretty good. It's going to go up just a hair shy, but that's still manageable for him. See you hopping for some vision. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you jump, if you're tall, you can see it right over the, the crest of that hill. Um, so for me, it's a little low out of my hand. I wanted it a little bit higher to beat these trees. Um, looks like I get a little bit fortunate and cut through them. So I'll have a long look, circle's edge. Yeah, a little bit of a tree can come in with as well on your path, it looks like, as we're going to see Sam step up and try to follow suit. And that looks a little inside. Indeed, it is. That's going to catch some early cabbage, and that's going to keep him with a good bit of distance still to cover. All right. BT. Just avoid the water. Yeah, he needs to get it going off the box. He's he's playing well everywhere else besides the box. Um, if he can just get a couple birdie looks like that one, yeah, that's I think a great shot. we'll see him start to warm up. You can clearly tell he's got the power. I mean, just from watching him, clearly if he can just... You know, get that disc on the right angle. He definitely has a chance to really attack this course, it feels like. So hopefully he can recover as we go along. As we see Sam, again, a little bit of a longer approach to deal with here. But seems like he has handled it just fine. Yeah, that'll be another another one of those tester putts for Sam. Speaking of testers, this is definitely no gimme for birdie for you. Oh! Yeah, I like that one out of my hand. Um, thought I made it. Just stayed in the air just a little bit too long. So I see him dead center, but on the band. Bar. And trying to get another birdie for himself. And oh, he hits the band and the rim. That is a double whammy. That yeah, is that, that one. Uh, that one. That one probably could have could have caught most of the time when you see him hit the band and drop. They kind of fall in. Yeah. So. The old double dink. Fortunately, that one's yeah. also gone a little bit wide for Sam. Seems like some struggles here to finish off this front nine everyone yeah yeah this is a this is one of the holes um it's not an easy hole but it's an easier one to birdie when you look back on the the previous holes that you played so as i say that gt does have the chance for the bird here we'll collect so that's nice to see some something getting salvaged for him after having a couple of tough holes yeah gt's a, a very solid player out of texas um surprised he's having this much troubles but he should be able to pick it up here and that's gonna wrap it up for our front nine we see cam is five down through nine self and gt remain even and sam now at one over as we kind of just take a quick look to recap the car we definitely still have a lot more to go with the back nine as well as two more rounds of play here at the six annual weapons of instruction brought to you by dynamic disc we appreciate you so much i'm dustin murray with me has been josh Hawkill, and we will see you in the next one